Good morning. Can I start by wishing everybody a warm welcome and thank you for joining us at this early hour. This is our first multi-site live webinar and I'm confident it will run smoothly, but if there are any problems, please bear with us. I first arrived in St Andrews in 1970, age seven, and spent six happy years as a boarder at New Park School, which was then on Hepburn Gardens. Every day I crossed the laid braes to the playing fields and every Sunday walked in crocodile file to St Leonard's Parish Church. It's a great pleasure to now have an office in the town and to be able to serve the wider area. Having opened 15 offices, there are three key matrix to make an, an office a success. That's its people, its location and timing. I think we've got all three absolutely right with a strong team led by George Lorimer, with an office located in the very busy and popular Bell Street, and at a time when we're seeing enhanced activity and demand from people living in thriving towns like St Andrews and being less reliant on living in larger cities such as London and Edinburgh. There is access to a Q&A platform online and at the end of the presentation we will open up the floor chaired by Shona Crawford, our marketing director. I would now like to pass you on to George, who will introduce his team and explain our service offering before Dr. John Boyle and the research team <clears throat> share some interesting data on the local markets. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, and good morning, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I've worked in residential property in Fife, uh, and the northeast of Scotland for the last 20 years. I'm hugely excited to be heading this new office for Retty & Co, particularly at a time where there is so much activity and demand to live in this particular locale. What makes the firm different to our competitors is the focus on customer service at every level. This is backed up by the best systems and databases with the support of the research team. The firm's mantra is we tell people what they need to know and not what they want to hear. So buyers and sellers can make informed decisions before committing to property sales or acquisitions. We offer a full estate agency service covering St Andrews, Fife and from Dundee North East. The firm also offers the wider geographic area of Scotland and North England and prides itself in selling many of the finest properties and the most interesting. We opened our office about four weeks ago now, and we have been delighted by the level of interest and instructions we've received to, to sell a variety of properties in the town and beyond. Our local knowledge and both national and international reach makes sure we are promoting properties to the widest target audience to optimise sales. We've hit the ground running with about three million pounds of sales agreed in the first four weeks and a good pipeline with more than six million pounds of new instructions, which include houses and flats in St Andrews itself, as well as country properties in Fife and Angus. So far, I've been as far north as Stonehaven. I'm assisted here in the office by Shona Burdis, who I've worked with for many years, and also Caitlin Clark, who's joined us as a sales negotiator. We're here to help everybody and very much look forward to working with you in the months ahead. I would now like to pass you over to Dr John Boyle. Hello, good uh, morning everyone. Um, and this is just a, a quick uh, briefing on the uh, local market in uh, St Andrews and uh, maybe explains a little bit about, um, about why we're here. Uh, so the focus initially is going to be on the sales and the new build market, looking at the uh, demand for housing um, in the town and how that has been pushing values uh, in recent years. Just some kind of key findings uh, that we'll pick up on as we go through uh, the slides. Uh, average house prices up over 320,000 now in the town, which is you know, um, a fairly solid growth over the last three years. Uh, the average house price is double that of uh, Fife. Uh, number of properties coming to the market has actually been dropping back um, over the last, um, over the last uh, year. Uh, rents are as high as anywhere uh, in Scotland, including Edinburgh. 
And Ready and Co, I mean, we sell properties across the market, but we have a particular speciality in the upper parts of the market. We sold over a quarter of a million pound house in Scotland in 2020. And we've also got particular expertise in the new build market. We brought over um, a third of the new build value to the market by agents in 2020 in the Edinburgh and Lothian's market. And St Andrews is going to have a new build focus um, in the coming years. We can see here that the um, the average house, the average, the trend of the average house price trend, uh, the, the trend of average house price in St Andrews uh, over the last five years and how that's been gradually moving up. It is a bit volatile because volumes in the, in the town are uh, relatively thin, but you can see that it's well ahead of regional and uh, national benchmarks. And the uh, more valuable properties tend to be clustered in and around the centre, so the you know the red dots are where uh, house prices are higher, um, and to the west where you tend to have uh, the larger homes, including the family homes. Uh, the more affordable parts of the market are uh, to the south of the town and the likes of the Craigton area. It may be surprising to note that if you look at just at the million pound mark in Scotland and you look at the average pound per square foot by local authority area, that um, the highest prices are found in Fife um, at £620 a square foot, which is uh, even higher than the uh, average pound per square foot uh, in the Edinburgh market. And that's really all due to the to the St Andrews effect. Listings, though, although demand has been high uh, within the St Andrews market and continues to be high, stock levels um, have actually dropped back uh, over uh, over the last year or two. Um, if we compare uh, the market, you know, pre-pandemic in 2019 with the market now, uh, there's 16 percent fewer properties that have been brought to the market in the first 19 weeks uh, of 2021. By value, we're just about on a par, but by number, uh, we're a good bit down. So strong demand pressures with weakening supply has been contributing to house price growth. The rental market in the town also very strong. Uh, average rent in Andrews now well over thirteen hundred pound per month. You know that compares uh, even with the Edinburgh market. Uh, one beds averaging nearly nine hundred, two beds over twelve hundred, three beds nearly fifteen hundred, and four beds uh, over two thousand. And you can see with the map there on the right just how it compares with some of the other towns within uh, the East Fife area. Uh, there's nothing uh, quite like it. Uh, Reddy and Co have a focus on, on the new build market. We've got a proprietary uh, new home sales database. We've got a very active uh, new home sales team. And we can use that proprietary database, which is called Property Tracking System or PTS, uh, to undertake some broad comparative analysis of St Andrews against the the wider Scottish market. And you can see here in 2020 that the average pound per square foot in St Andrews was nearly £400 a square foot uh, compared to just over £240 a square foot in Scotland. Average price around 400000 in St Andrews, again well above the Scottish average of around 280000 But the average size um, on a square foot basis are about 1150 broadly comparable with the average new build a property sale uh, in Scotland, and that uh, corresponds with a, you know, a three-bed, uh, relatively modest family home. Um, and you know, we can compare these new build prices in St Andrews again with other East Five towns. You can see well ahead um, of other regional comparators. And then the graph at the bottom shows that. House prices or new build house prices in Fife tends to cluster around that, you know, 200 to 300 pound per square foot mark. But the uh, the outliers all tend to be, uh, the outliers to the right of that graph are all, are all clustered in St Andrews. So, you know, Walled Garden, Century Court, Laid Braes, all pushing up well beyond 500. 
close to £600 per square foot. And of course, the scores up an average price of close to £1,000 uh, a square foot. There is, uh, we're going to see a dramatic expansion of the town um, over the next few years, and that's going to support population um, as well as economic growth. And just a short summary of the St Andrews West um, expansion plans. There's going to be uh, 900 new homes, of which uh, around a third are going to be uh, affordable. There's also going to be employment land, and university uses, a business park, local retail, care home, uh, hotel, uh, additional community and social infrastructure, and a new secondary school, which is due for completion this summer. Our latest Scottish house price forecasts um, suggest that we are going to see a um, considerable uptick in house price growth over the next five years. Uh, we think around about 23% uh, should be particularly strong. This year, we're already at double digits in the, the first quarter um, of the year. And although things we think might settle down a little bit in 2022, the demand supply imbalances within the market should still see prices moving on uh, in the year subsequent um, to that. As a prime market, uh, St Andrews, we would anticipate moving towards our central uh, to upside forecast, so probably around about 23 to up to 30 percent. And now I think we're passing back to Shona uh, for some questions. Hi, thank you, John. Um, yes, we do have a few questions that have come in. Um, I'm going to start with looking at how the market is going to be performing in the next sort of six to 18 months, because we've had a few questions that are all around a similar theme. So um, I guess, George, I'm going to ask you this first. How do you see the market in the next six, 12 and 18 months? Uh, thanks. Thanks very much, Shona. Um, well, we're currently in a very an exceptionally strong market at present, and um, when when you look back over previous years, um, the market has 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 been very strong, and I, I don't see any reason to uh, expect that there will be any change. Um, the question would be whether it can maintain the, the exceptionally strong levels uh, and intensity that we're seeing at present. It may come back slightly um, from from this peak that we're seeing just now. But uh, the St Andrews market historically has been exceptionally strong and I, I would expect it to continue over the next 6, 12, 18 months. OK, thank you. Um, thank you for that, uh, George. Um, just sort of on that same theme, um, I've been asked by a couple of people, what type of buyers are you seeing? Um, so I guess this is a question for you again, George. Is it local families, investors or people coming from out with the area, sort of um, moving out of Edinburgh? Or are you even mm. seeing foreign money coming into the area? Um, all of the above, I, I would say. Um, there is there is um, great demand from family buyers at, at present. Um, a real shortage of stock, unfortunately, for them in, in the town. You know the the market in the the six to eight hundred bracket um, within the town within the thirty mile an hour zone is 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 incredibly competitive just now. Um, but we we are seeing buyers from from coming coming from down south overseas. Um, people are selling up in London. People are selling up in Edinburgh. There there seems to be money moving out from the cities and uh, people looking at quality of life and and so on in in this in these strange times. So uh, all sorts of pressures on the on the town and. The shortage of supply across the board is 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 driving the the strong prices. Okay, and just following up on that, I've just had a new question, and um, and George, you might be able to help with this one as well, but maybe John might have a view on it too. But we'll start with you, George. Um, it feels like vendors are reluctant to bring their homes to market right now. Um, as a sale is likely to be achieved within weeks, if not days. But then the flip side of that is there is a lack of stock for them then to choose from. Mm. How do we fix this? And that's a, that's a very good question. And uh, yeah, there, there definitely is a shortage of stock. We, we're, we're bringing on um, a few, a, a good few properties over the next month or so, but um, uh, 
there's no there's no easy answer for that. We're coming out of a very difficult, challenging period uh, with with COVID. Um, there's been a Scottish election. Um, I would anticipate as as we move move through uh, May and June and into July, people will really focus on on getting on with their lives and and come early autumn. I, I would see see um, volumes starting to pick up. I would anticipate that uh, people will want to get on with their lives and and, and this log jam will will start to lift. Okay, so John, I have a question for you now, slightly following on from what we were just talking about, um, but it's a view on the property prices in Fife as a whole over the next six to 12 months. And this is thinking about a couple of things perhaps having an impact. So the SNP election victory and any implications on the property market. And then secondly, as George was talking about just there, as people start to return back to a bit more normal and working patterns start to be slightly more normal, so less working from home. What's your view on how this is going to affect property prices in Fife in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, thanks Shona. Um, I think as I said earlier, uh, we think house price growth um, over the short term, so that would be your next six to 12 months, are going to be reasonably strong. So our current forecast is around about uh, eight percent for Scotland. Uh, Fife is tends to Fife house prices tend to move with general Scottish house prices. So, you know, a forecast for Fife would be uh, something comparable. Um, I think to that. Uh, the SNP victory. I mean, we've had an SNP government now in Scotland for fourteen years, um, and you know, it hasn't really um, affected um, house price growth. I mean, even NDF one when it was called it had a had a pretty modest impact really on uh, trading activity levels. I think the key question maybe is you know what if NDF2 happens over the next uh, over the next few years and you know if uh, if a yes vote is um, anticipated but um, I don't think that is um, in any way uh, imminent and I think if one uh, was called then I think the you know, there is, it's, it's very much all to play for. You know, if you look at the opinion polls where the country's kind of split down uh, the middle on it. I think the question on return to normality is is an interesting one and, you know, we have to see how that's going to play out. But um, it's certainly been, you know, very evident over the pandemic uh, period that people have been looking to, you know, almost kind of COVID proof their homes. So. You know, they've been looking for large properties, been looking for properties for um, outdoor space. Um, they've been looking for properties where they can, you know, maybe use a room for a study so they can so they can work from home. And that's been a factor, you know, the um, some of the um, impetus for house prices has come from people um, uh, seeking these uh, larger properties with um, uh, with greater uh, with greater amenity. As things begin to settle down a little bit more then, you maybe you, you would expect that effect to kind of weaken a little bit and you know that's why we're expecting um, maybe a slowdown in house prices uh, in 2022. Uh, but I think the you know the demand supply imbalance within the Scottish market is still uh, very evident in most parts of the in most parts of the country and that's why you know we think house prices will continue to move uh, modestly upwards over the next few years. OK, thanks, John. Um, George, I'm going to go back to you for a second um, and ask you a question about lettings, if that's OK. Um, are we going to be offering general lettings in the town and are we going to also be offering an open golf letting service? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thanks, John. Yeah, very much so. Um, we're, we're offering the full lettings um, service. Um, using the 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 Reti experience and uh, knowledge um, backed up by the the experience head office resource um, we're already actually receiving good levels of inquiries um, for 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 lettings and open golf lets um, and we're we're very well pleased to to offer that service to the town okay thanks George and another question for you you mentioned in your presentation at the start that you'd been as far north as Stonehaven um, was that a one-off or will the new office be looking to cover areas, more areas north of the Tay, so into Dundee, Broughty Ferry, Angus and reaching up the coast? 
Um, thanks again for that one. Yeah, I mean, the primary focus is absolutely St Andrews and, and around and about, but uh, I, I was born and bred north of the Tay myself. I went to school uh, Dundee High all my days, so I, I know this area very well. I've sold uh, a lot of properties in, in Dundee, Broughty Ferry, Angus and, and round and about. So um, yeah, um, areas out, out with Core St Andrews are, are very much on the radar and uh, I, I'll be more than happy to, to jump in the car and head up through Angus up to Stonehaven, Aberdeen on occasion if, if need be. And equally, we, we cover the whole of Fife between the, the St Andrews and the Edinburgh office. Um, so full coverage is offered. OK, thanks, George. And I just have one final question, and it's um, about the St Andrews West development for you, John. Um, you talked a little bit about um, what was coming, um, but would you be able just to quickly recap on the timelines and your views on the price points for the development for property? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the infrastructure is already going in, as explained, and, you know, the school is currently being built and will be ready there for occupation. Um, it's quite a significant expansion for the town, you know, 900 homes and 30% you know, of those are going to be uh, are going to be affordable. Um, the um, houses were going to be built, you know, um, and they start from next year, understand, and should be uh, ready for occupation probably from um, early 2023. Uh, we've been you know, providing some advice on um, on the development. I can't really say if we're the uh, but the price point is is being aimed at, but um, you know some of the um, some of the some of the evidence that we uh, looked at in the presentation, um, you know, average house price since new build house price in St Andrews around about four hundred thousand. You know, that's probably not a you know a bad starting point, but you know this is going to be a kind of a mixed tenure development with a whole range of um, of different house types. So, um, what you will get is a you know, probably a graduated market in, in this part of the town that will suit a, a multiplicity of buyers. OK, thanks, John. Um, that's me. I don't have any more questions. Um, we will share um, copies of John's presentation um, afterwards to all attendees. But just to finish off, I'm going to hand back to George um, for a few closing words. Thank you. Thank you, Shona. Um, and um, thank you to you all for joining us at this early hour of the morning. Um, we, we hope you found the presentation interesting and useful. A copy of today's webinar recording will be circulated shortly. We're looking forward to working with you all in the future. Um, if there are any immediate questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We hope you all have a great day and many thanks.